Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to talk about Kickstarter and the uh, Brandon Sanderson campaign again. Yeah, you talked about it a couple days ago. Yeah, and people were salty then, and now they're even more salty. Yeah, imagine that. The more money this guy makes, the saltier Twitter gets. The salt flows. The salt is flowing, and I, I kind of like to see it. Now, it's interesting to see <laughs> how... He's like, I like it. I do. I do like it. Because, look, to me... This is the market deciding. Mm -hmm. The market deciding who is and who is not successful. Of course, Twitter is taking it as as a white male privilege. You know what's funny to me, though, about all that? It, well, come, what it comes across is them just being like whiny, like jealous whiny babies. But this, there's this idea that if, if this campaign wasn't there, that somehow all that money would have gone to these other people. But that's not how this works. They wouldn't have just given you their money if they didn't give to this person. And we have seen this time and time and time again. We saw it with the assault over Comicsgate. Mm -hmm. uh, I think a lot of it came down to numbers. They will they will say Twitter will say it has to do with the uh, the quote unquote bad takes of of the Comicsgate guys. I say it has more to do with the fact that the numbers are public. They're seeing these three hundred, four hundred. $500,000 crowdfunding campaigns, comic book campaigns. They're seeing uh, Ethan Van Skyver, a person they don't like very much, make over a million dollars publicly. Mm -hmm. And it drives them insane. And they think if they were out of the way that somehow, like you said, people would give them money when really this is just the market deciding who is successful. Same with like Boom. Boom Studio. Like that. Yeah. Yeah. Boom Studio. Uh, you know, they launched uh, Berserker with Keanu Reeves. It made like two and a half, three million dollars, something like that. And comics Twitter tried to basically cancel that campaign. They're like, how dare you, Boom? You've got enough money. You shouldn't be taking money from marginalized creators. Like, Bitch, please, they weren't going to support your stuff anyway. Right. And like, you know, they're saying here, white privilege from fellow writers. Well, here's the thing. It's like, well, just because this person's white and male doesn't mean that, you know, if you put your campaign up, you wouldn't get money because you weren't white and male. That's 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 because that's this person has a platform. That's the whole at the end of the day, that's what this is about. That's what this is about. And look, this these situations always rip the mask off of, you know, Twitter complaining about social justice and uh, you know, uh, inequality and equity and all these things. And then you realize at the end of the day, a lot of times it's just sour grapes. How dare that person be more successful than me? Uh, if that person were out of the way, I would be the one in the spotlight or somebody yeah, else would be the one in the spotlight. It's and that's the soap not... opera syndrome. Yeah. I keep telling people that. And if those are new here, the soap opera syndrome basically is that stupid plot device where the craziest person who likes the, the, the other character feels that if they kill off their love interest, then suddenly they'll love them instead. And that that's what this reminds me of. Yeah, in reality, what happens when there are these massive campaigns that get all kinds of media attention outside of the, the usual outlets, you know, when like freaking USA Today is talking about it and stuff, it drives more people to the yes. platform. Yes, and it actually might benefit everyone because if you have more people coming to the platform to back this, they might look around to other projects and back other ones because they're like, oh, I didn't know this was even a thing. Oh, look at that. And then usually it actually elevates a lot of people. But that's not how Twitter views it. No. Uh, Twitter views things uh, simplistically like a toddler. Yeah. So we're going <laughs> to we're going to talk about this before we get into it any further. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. Over 260,000 subs. Yay. Thank you so much for the support. We have been talking more about Kickstarter lately. They've been on the the wrong side of the wrong side of it. The wrong side of Twitter lately. Uh, they announced a few months ago that they were going to go to blockchain, mm -hmm. which uh, you know rankled some people. Mm -hmm. Over on, on uh, Twitter, some game developers and comic book people announced loudly. Oh, yes. And then and then yes, Spike Troutman, who was like the biggest crowd funder ever on Kickstarter, according to Spike Troutman, went and did their own um, uh, Kickstarter pre-order thing that was their own thing outside of Kickstarter. And um, they didn't they didn't do that great, honestly. Yeah. So we had we had, uh, you know, game developers saying that they weren't going to use Kickstarter anymore because of blockchain, even though they didn't understand what was going on. And Kickstarter hadn't actually rolled it out yet. They still have it. They still have um, it. They're on blockchain. We had their new comics outreach consultant resign over blockchain again, not fully understanding when and if, you know, this is going to happen. And then Spike Trotman, who has, uh, you know, used Kickstarter pretty much since the beginning. I'll give her that. 
went to freaking Forbes and slammed Kickstarter for going to blockchain and tried to drive people to her her own website, and she's sitting at about thirty six thousand mm-hmm. dollars. This campaign would have probably done at least two to three times that had it been on Kickstarter. People tend to stay where you find them. Mm-hmm. Which we could have told her that. But you know, that's her choice. She wants to do it that way. Yeah, whatever. but if you take payments from any you know services that use blockchain. And, you know, stop making sense. Yes. PayPal, <laughs> PayPal and all these other uh, payment processors Stripe's doing it now. are all using crypto. And yeah, anyway, um, they said it was for environmental concerns it has nothing to do with the environment. In my opinion, it has to do with gatekeeping, which brings us back to this. The mainstream publishing industry is very, very, very gate kept. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, Kickstarter uh, has made it possible for people to to publish things that normally would not get published or to uh, beta test, I guess, different projects, different ideas. Well, it's funny to me, too. Like, you're talking about the being gatekept for the mainstream in- industry. When you're talking about prose books and stuff, well, like the New York Times bestsellers list, for example, it is easily cheated, easily manipulated. Publishers and writers that are the, the, the okay people do it all the damn time. And there was an instance where a girl went and found out how to game it, did the same thing. But because she wasn't through the proper channels, they outed this person and raised holy hell. But all she did was take advantage of the system that, that they've been taking advantage of this entire damn time. Yeah, I talked about that a couple of days ago. It's, it's oh, did ve- you? Yeah. yeah, it's very gatekept. And, and basically, any more to get a mainstream publishing deal, like you have to be the right kind of person. You have to have the right agent. You have to have the right connections. There's a game that's supposed to be played and everybody's supposed to. But we had two of those three. Yeah, yeah. We, we weren't did. the right kind of people at the time. We weren't the right kind of people. We were when we got picked up. And then, uh, you know, the the switch had been flipped. It was around then, 2014. Yeah. You yeah. figure it out. You figure it out. Anyway, Brandon Sanderson uh, decided he wasn't going to wait for a mainstream publishing deal. He was going to go to Kickstarter. And this guy this is a guy who's done very well for himself. I, I've had a chance to look into him a little bit more since the last video. And he has quite the following. That's and, why he's getting the money. That's why he's getting the money. This is the market deciding that Brandon Sanderson should sell more books. Because people like the books that Brandon Sanderson produced so far. This is not Kickstarter unfairly uh, promoting Brandon Sanderson over anybody else. In fact, uh, knowing some of the people at Kickstarter, they would have preferred that Brandon Sanderson be a different kind of person, I'm sure. But Brandon Sanderson has the audience and he also has the money to pay for the PR and all that stuff around it. Um, it's okay when people are like and D. Stevenson do it, though. Yes. Yeah. So let's, um, you know, it's interesting. I said, you know, would they complain about him as much now? He is, I guess, a little more conservative. Uh, I think he's, I think he's Mormon. I don't even um, know. I don't even pay attention. Yeah. But, uh, how dare he, <laughs> how dare he, how dare he. So that might be part of the issue that people have with it, but it's interesting. This uh, article from screen rant talks about how amazing he's doing. And then you get down to here and they're like, you know, it's, uh, it's not good because, you know, an immensely successful writer doesn't need Kickstarter. This is the same baby, baby logic, toddler logic that was used with Archie that, that uh, the comic book industry used to get Archie to pull their Kickstarter in 2015. They're like, Archie is a major publisher. They don't need crowdfunding. Well, he might not have needed a Kickstarter, but he could have done it himself and, and another platform with the same outcome. But the thing is, Kickstarter might need him. And those that are putting out projects on Kickstarter will probably benefit from him being there, as I've said before. You you, you have people that are coming to back this Kickstarter that might have never used the platform before, that are going to look around and back other projects. I see it all the time. So people that are complaining might actually be making money because they're there to back this one. Yep. So people are complaining. Uh, they're not putting a lot of links to the complaints in Scream Ramp, but Bounding in the Comics did compile of course they did. some more Good of the job. complaints. Uh, we, we did talk about it over the weekend. I talked about it over the weekend. Yeah, I, and I wasn't here for that one. The backlash had just begun because this campaign had only been live for a few days. Mm-hmm. But now more and more people from the mainstream publishing industry are weighing in on the situation. How dare he? The salt is flowing freely. The salt is flowing freely. Freely. So this is uh, Natanya Barron, Blue Check. Today's a really good day to support your favorite author who hasn't made $18 million in the last few days. And that was a couple of days ago. 
Uh, am I personally upset Brandon Sanderson for making money? Uh, no, not at all. Truly good for him. What makes me frustrated is that especially genre writers are told there's not a big market for fantasy and, and uh, many readers stick to just a handful of well, authors. Well, that isn't untrue. We got told the same thing about the fantasy market and things like that. Yeah. And people do tend to stick with who they know and who they, who they like. Yeah, I mean, but if you read between the lines. It, 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 I'm salty because it, he's making money and I'm not. She sounds very, very catty. Oh, That's, well, the other one, the other person's a lot worse. Uh, this runaway Brandon Sanderson Kickstarter is totes the origin story for the Brandon Sanderson Presents imprint wherein he shines a spotlight on by publishing by POC right. authors writing epic fantasy steeped in their own cultures, right? Right, because basically if you have a platform, that means you have to give it to everybody else. You know how many times we get told we're supposed to give our platform to everybody else too? And I mean, we have people sometimes, but the thing is, it's like mostly we're just too busy talking about shit and doing our job to go do all that stuff. But if somebody has something they earned, they don't owe it to everybody else. I mean, I'm so tired of hearing that. Um, side note, I think they're missing a completely obvious joke, uh, you know, that people could be making. With the let's go, Brandon. And I, I'm like, they completely missed that. <laughs> I'm like, you know, that, I, I'm surprised I'm not seeing tweets about that. I'm sure there are tweets. That's what I was lo- sure thinking. Oh, we'll see somebody making some snarky comment with that. And they didn't. I'm surprised. Queen of Rats, Alex Brown says, getting increasingly more irritated by the continued astronomical success of that Kickstarter. Well, it has nothing to do with you. <laughs> That's the problem. It has nothing to do yeah. with you. There is so much excellent, diverse sff out there and y'all are intent on giving that man that man millions of dollars but if he has an audience and they want to read his stuff that's up to them i read a bunch of his books years ago mostly enjoyed them except the more i read the more bored i got every every at every turn he picks the most obvious choice and his characters are so stock you could order them out of a catalog well you know 25 30 million dollars later apparently a lot of people like those stock maybe characters. there's a stock because it's trying to be general to to appeal to general audiences yes um i used to joke with squid king who reads a lot I, oh, I said, yeah very much so uh stephen king writes books for people who don't read very many books because mm-hmm. it's basically the largest common denominator and yeah. that's how you end up with a 25 million dollar plus kickstarter yes <laughs> Imagine yeah. that. Imagine that. I always say you can niche yourself into oblivion, and there's a reason why I say that. Yeah. Uh, it's largely because he lacks the creativity that comes with having a broad, diverse worldview. No, he likes to make money. He likes to make money. Uh, with each book, I walked away feeling like if only these characters had been queer, if this colonial setting had been interrogated more, if that trope had been subverted. He walked away cashing a check. If only had been the last Jedi. Right. Fully, oh my God, she goes on and on. They, I'm sorry, they, they go on and on. Put any of his novels up against something like The Jasmine Throne or Son of the Storm and his books collapse like wet paper. In, in their opinion. There's nothing there but surface characters and hollow plots. It's everything you've read before. Nothing new. This is more rewarding. Excuse me, I have to go warm up my microwave burrito. Yeah, my I mean, it's is. like, but it doesn't matter. The general audiences want to read his stuff. I don't want to tell you. No, I'm not going to let him skate on his religious beliefs either. He's part of a church that hates people like me. Yes, there it is. There it is. There it is. Oh, and he's deeply racist because they say so. I don't know. I don't know him. He might be. Who knows? I don't know. Is he? I, I Everybody's deeply Every, racist. That's what I'm saying. If you're not them, you're all racist. They think I'm deeply but racist. But you know what the funny thing is? I love the people that are really racist and then going on about other people being racist. And I'm like, I think that's hilarious to me. Because it's like, they, they're like going on about, you know, all this stuff, saying all this shit. And then they're like, definitely would qualify as racism going on about everybody else's racist against them. Thank you. I'm not saying that person is. I'm saying it just it's just funny. It's like thank you so much for speaking on behalf of people that didn't ask you to speak on their behalf. Their uh, 23 year old recent grad school Karen. You know. Yeah, yeah. Becky. It's yeah. Um, Could be a Kyle. It's they them. Uh, John Scalzi, who's in the publishing scene. I forget what he does exactly, but he's he's I know in the name. Yeah, he's he's in. I want to say Publishers care. Weekly. Anyway, anyway, he is he is. I guess you would say a gatekeeper in the publishing scene, and this is his his take. Before anyone else mentions it, yes, indeed, Brandon also benefits from operating on the lowest difficulty setting of life here in the U.S. He's doing well because he's a white guy. Yes. Okay. So so is John Scalzi. Yeah, I was going to say, but isn't John? I mean, is he white? I don't know. Well, white guys can throw other white guys under the bus because it's okay. Mm. Because we're we're all, you know, bros. Uh, Anyway, it's entirely possible some opportunities were open to him as a straight white male that weren't open to others. 
and still might not be. Update, this comment has made some of the usual suspects very salty. My frothy little dudes, being a straight white male gives you a leg up in this society. Yes, still stop pretending otherwise. You know, I, it's always kind of insulting when they say that because it's basically like, you know, it's like... I didn't succeed in life, and it's only because straight white men kept me down. You know what I mean? It seems like an easy way out. Now, do I think that sometimes, you know, there are some benefits? Yes. Do I think that's to the level they keep claiming it is in this day and age? No. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, I'll give you that. But the, 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 thing, the thing is, is the market, the market has decided that Brandon Sanderson was going to get millions of dollars because people liked his books. It didn't have anything to do with him being right. a white dude. And I actually would argue... Um, anymore, especially with Hollywood and social media. And, 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 and I know for a fact in publishing, I know for a personal fact in publishing, being a straight white male works against you. So J.K. Rowling's got way more money than this guy. Mm -hmm. But they hate her too. So Right. You know, they, well, because saying. anybody who's not them. But the whole argument about straight white male might have been true before. But when it comes to Hollywood, when it comes to publishing, when it comes to comics, animation, all that, I can tell you for a fact it is not the truth. Not now. It's actually detrimental to you. So now we have guys like uh, Patton Oswalt, who he put up a, a Kickstarter a year or two ago, and it, it failed miserably. It was, I That's mean, for him. dick. Yeah, it did like 40, 50,000, something like that. he's a straight white male. Yeah, right? Obviously. Because um, they always succeed and win. So so what what do you propose Kickstarter do about it? That they, they turn it off and be like, you know what, Brandon? Mm, $25 million, that's plenty of money for anybody, especially especially an already rich white man. So we're just going to, we're going to shut your campaign down. No, we're going to do affirmative action and we're going to take 10% of your campaign and give it to other people who, who, um, you know, aren't. And then by that time, by the time we divide it all up, everybody will get exactly $30 and 57 cents. That is kind of what happened with Berserker. That was the, the complaint with, uh, Berserker, um, a lot of people were like, well, Boom pays low page rates. But the thing is that the, the page rates they were paying were on books that didn't sell very well. So you have to kind of compensate, you know, somebody working on Power Rangers is probably going to make way more money than somebody working on one of the Boom box, you know, mm -hmm. cartoon books. And uh, they were trying to guilt Boom into basically redistributing the, the money from the Kickstarter to, you know, other employees from projects, you know, five years ago. And it was for for a Keanu Reeves project, and then they did a Power Rangers, you know, project. And boom, kind of, sort of caved. They're like, well, we'll give some money to some other campaigns or whatever, pat, pat, whatever. It's kind of like a, um, you know, a tax. I know mm. uh, uh, Zach did a video on. He called about that. He called it the uh, the woke tax, basically. Like you have to pay the tax. They're gonna do, they're gonna try doing it with this guy. They're gonna be like, you Wait, need to donate. I don't think he's going to do that. You need to donate half of your earnings to you know. He doesn't whatever. have to do anything. He doesn't have to do. And Kickstarter's shit. making a shit ton of money. They don't they don't care. Well, that's the thing. Like, if you thought if you thought for a second, uh, comic book Twitter that you were going to guilt Kickstarter into doing an about face on their plans for blockchain and all of that, that they were worried. It's like this guy has made more money than the entirety of the comic book vertical. Last year. And this is like a prose book or comic book? Yeah, it's, pro it's, it's prose four, book. four prose right, books. Right, because mostly yeah. prose books sell outsell comics and yes. things like that. So it just proves that when you're going on about how important comics are to Kickstarter, they're not. They're not. And it, what's Kickstarter's like? What's their percentage they usually take? I don't know what it is now. It was like five or ten percent. Okay, so if it was like if it was like if it was even five percent at this point in time, they're they're making like a couple million dollars. You yeah. know? Yeah, and they don't have to do anything. Like this guy's doing everything. He's mm -hmm. he's bringing. I mean, how many how many minorities are are getting jobs at Kickstarter because of this guy? <laughs> you know. There you go. There so you there's, go. There's That's the upside. Looking. You know. So this is going to continue, and I think I think we're going to see the uh, the market correct a lot of this ridiculousness on Twitter. That at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how hard you virtue signal if you don't sell mm -hmm. books or games or comics or whatever. It doesn't matter who you are. It matters what you produce. And the sad truth of it is, you know, they're not completely wrong where people, only certain people get through. And that, that we know that. Like, for example, for comics with these publishers, they only have slots for like so many books a year. And at yeah. the beginning, it's already filled up with people who keep getting more deals. Mm -hmm. There's people who don't even earn out. And by earning out, that means you pay back your advance. And they brag about how they don't earn out and they get another deal. Meanwhile, there's people that might actually make money for them who don't even get in because the other people are just sitting in the seats. It's the same damn thing. 
and everybody is kind of going and doing their own things now. And this way, you probably have to pay an agent or anything. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I'm like, if you can do it, then do it. But don't be salty if you, you know, if somebody's doing it well. Look at the bright side. If you have a project on Kickstarter right now, you could probably leverage this to your advantage. People are coming in that might see your project that wouldn't have seen it before. It actually might help you out. Yeah, right. But that's that's uh, positive thinking, and that's not oh, no, something. I'm that, negative. Ask just ask Twitter. That's not something. All the time. Twitter is good at. All right, we gotta wrap this one up. Yeah. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.